morning, good Monday morning to you. Sitting here reading a fascinating article by the Archdiocese, or from the Archdiocese of Washington, entitled, uh, Why the Modern View of the Book of Revelation May Be Flawed. And uh, it's written by Charles Pope. It can be found on the internet, uh, in which uh, this priest takes issue with the traditional dating of Revelation and the traditional application of Revelation. And it's uh, what's interesting is that he takes note of the fact that the late date of Revelation is the accepted view, but, as he says, things are changing. <laughs> well, that's an understatement. Well, anyway, welcome back to my, uh, my morning musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. I've been sharing with you for a good while now some thoughts, brief, on Satan and the victory of Christ, pointing out that the charismatic gifts, that Satan, uh, all of that was to end at the coming of the Lord. Now, that's generally accepted. The trouble, of course, is did the Lord come in A.D. 70? There is, needless to say, tremendous confusion in the religious world about the cessation of the charismatic gifts and more specifically the topic of my presentations the defeat of satan well one of the things that i've heard in several emails all very nicely stated thank you is well well don if you believe the charismata have ended then do you even believe in prayer? Yes. That's the simple answer. Um, I think there's a tremendous amount of confusion in the religious world today. When we talk about prayer, and does God answer prayer, and I absolutely believe in prayer and the power of prayer, I've seen it in my own life, I've seen it operative, I praise the Lord for the power of prayer. But you see, the real question is, can we believe in the power of prayer and likewise believe that the charismata have ended? And I believe that we can because, as I begin to state, I believe one of the great confusions in the religious world today is the confusion about the proper definition of a miracle. So, I'm going to present a short series, very short series, on the definition of a biblical miracle. Just the other day, I received an email from a gentleman who said, Well, Don, if you say that miracles have ended, what about the following? And examples were given of people who were under medical treatment uh, and prayer. And they got better. Well, praise God. And we're thankful for things like that. But that doesn't address the question. So, in the next few sessions, I will be addressing the issue. What is a genuine miracle? And is what many people call miracles, is it really a miracle? Does it meet the criteria that the Bible gives for a miracle? And I want to suggest to you, as kindly as possible, that when I look around, when I read, when I hear claims about miracles today, I do not see. I do not see the things that I read about in Scripture. You don't want to miss this upcoming series. So today is really just a teaser. Be watching for the flip side as we discuss what is a biblical miracle. We'll see you on the flip side.